Domination Nation. How the hell are you? It's me, you, I'm back on Dominations. I'm here, I'm back. It's been about a week or so. Been a little busy. Kids caught the winter sickness. I, I also acquired it. You may be able to tell with my voice is a little nasally. Uh, but uh, I'm back on. You know, hope to be more frequently on in the future. Thank you for hanging in there with me. And, uh, channel's doing pretty good. I appreciate everybody for watching. Thank you very much. Let's get started. In this, today's video, we're going to go over, I've got three layouts to talk about. One is kind of a modified version of one you've already seen. Uh, one is this one, which I kind of, um, it's a global take on an atomic base I saw on the leaderboard, so I'm not going to take complete credit for that. And then I've got another one that I've created. Either way, i got to get these layouts shown online on video so I can make some new ones. Um, also wanted to talk about planes, airplanes, where they come in from, why they come in from certain uh, sides when you think they maybe should come in from another side. Also, how they target items. Where to place your air defenses accordingly on your layout based on your deforested areas and stuff like that. And uh, also maybe talk a little bit on the... Uh, forums, what's going on on, you know, Nexon forums, Dominations forums online, that kind of stuff real quickly. So, to get started, we'll just recap on my progress since my last video. Uh, I started the fort upgrade, and uh, it took eight citizens forever, and I got tired of that because I couldn't participate in wars, so I did, as you can see, I've got the 652 crowns, that's what's left over. I bought a few crowns to finish my fort. Uh, I usually only buy the crowns whenever it's something uh, I've already paid for, it's taking forever, and it's blocking me from being in war. So uh, that's why I did it. I let it go for a few days, and I couldn't take it anymore. I was out for two wars. It drove me crazy, so uh, I went ahead and crowned it off. Oh, who cares? Whatever. Um, but that's it right there. Uh, it now has the uh, Churchill um, General, who is very strong, uh, out of the gates. So, uh, l nice, uh, cheap upgrades also, starting at, I forgot exactly how much, $10,000 or something like that. Not very much, and it takes only eight hours for the first few rounds of upgrades. So that's what I've been doing with him in the armory. He's going right now uh, in the general's page. You can see him right there. Everyone else is level 12 except for, Alex except for Alexander, and uh, he'll be going to 12 soon. Someday I may specialize in only a few, four specific up, uh, generals and upgrade them and leave the rest, but for now I'm doing them all kind of at the same pace. What else is new here? Uh, research just finished on my uh, last, or my extra caltrops. I'm upgrading that to kind of get it caught up with my barbed wires. And um, I need to start something new in there. But majority of everything, like always for me right now at least, is in the university. Let's take a quick look at the uh, diversity here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven girls. One, two, three, four, five, six guys. Yeah, good ratio. Anyways, <laughs> uh, touch on this. Chief Hiawatha is complete. I now have the uh, Five Nations boost, which is one less citizen on the food researches, which is super sweet, leaving me a couple citizens left over. For instance, right now, I'm doing the uh, howitzer damage going to level 5. Um, one less citizen on that bad boy, I believe. CTG Assault Infantry hit points going up uh, as well. Going to level 6. She's still looking good with her scepter. <clears throat> uh, King Sejong, Submachine. Let's go on level 7. Also uh, did a little bit of tower boost in the last over the last week as well. Sultan is doing that tank depot defender damage, which I've started to notice a little bit more defensive uh, victories and stuff like that. Uh, but essentially, I need to pause my university upgrades here soon, probably when this round of things are done, so I can upgrade the university so I can start uh, upgrading my tank damage right here. Uh, that's what I was wanting to get to, and I'm ready. I just have to upgrade my university. So that's where we're at in the university right now. Always getting knowledge. Uh, give you that sleeper base people might not realize how strong you are based on uh, your level but little do they know you've got the university skills to pay the bills um, okay we just had a new guy join the Alliance San Fran Tokyo uh, where's he at here uh, there he is Maximus take a look he's a uh, viewer subscriber probably I hope so if not maybe he will be soon but anyways uh, thank you for watching Maximus thanks for joining any of you guys that want to join Feel free, uh, San Fran Tokyo and San Fran Tokyo 2. 
Uh, we'll find a place for you. Uh, but thanks for joining, Max. Moving right along. Um, any other upgrades? Real quick, we'll take a look here. Mm -mm -mm. I now have three generals. I think I had that in the last video, so that's probably not new. But anyways, that's about it for this one. Uh, as far as where I'm at, uh, upgrade-wise and all that good stuff. Since I takes less citizens to do my university stuff, I can have four going and still have two left over to prune my trees and mine my gold. Uh, that's always nice. Moving right along to the defensive highlight, or the uh, the highlight for this video is going to be uh, air defenses, planes, where they come in from, how they attack, blah, blah, blah. So let's get right into it. Um, here's the layout I'm going to pull up to discuss what I want to talk about, because it's kind of confusing uh, when you talk about it. Because uh, there's a couple factors. Whenever you have a plane, let's say on offense, you're attacking a base. Let's say this base has all kinds of stuff or whatever. But for purposes of the tutorial here, we're going to leave it blank like this. Um, and you, uh, I don't know, let's put these air guys in here. Right up here. I probably wouldn't do that normally. I say they're about a tier 2 or 3 defense. So I usually put down uh, mortars, cannons, and tanks, and spawners, and stuff like that first. And then kind of air defenses out there and then beyond that maybe your towers and readouts and stuff like that so uh, but anyways for purposes of the discussion here's where these air defenses are um, basically centralized in the square that I have deforested you can see my square pattern here um, so you would uh, for instance let's say you're attacking and you target this air defense you may think that your plane is going to come in from the northeast over here because this is so close to this edge that would be where you would think it would come in from so your plane your idea is you, you target this and then the plane comes in from down here and you're like what the heck and uh, why did it come in from there and not here it's closer to this edge than it is to this edge that may be true but what it's actually the plane is going to target it's going to come in from whatever edge is closest to but it's not the edge of your deforested path it's the max edge of your map so it's actually going to determine is it closer to here or is it closer to here since i don't have any further i could go southeast or southwest with my deforestation items are technically closer to these edges than they are to these farther edges where i haven't deforested yet or for example over here where i have deforested may make more sense to kind of talk about so here you would say well it's kind of actually closer to down here this may not be exact but the purpose of this uh, discussion is to kind of let you know that the planes are going to come in from the very closest edge of the actual map not where you've deforested so is it closer to this edge or is it closer to this edge so you got to think about that when you're deploying your planes um, people like me have a base that's uh, you know deforested to the south your planes are typically going to come in from the southeast or southwest uh, because they're actually closer to those edges than these edges hopefully that's making sense um, keep that in mind when making your attacks on the defensive side for uh, example let's go and take a look at the current layout I'm rocking right now uh, you can see my air defenses here, 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 and here. They're not in a perfect square pattern like I like to be. I like to be symmetrical with my items. So that doesn't matter which side you come in from. You're going to deal with the same percentage of defenses and stuff like that. But when it comes to air defense, I purposefully place them closer to the edges that my base is closer to. So my base is, majority of my base is in the south end, closer to the south than it is the north. So with that in mind, I, I have them kind of spread out in a v-shape uh, going south southeast southwest I don't have as many air defenses up at the very top because typically for the majority of the items on my base they're gonna be in the south half I guess you could say south quadrant uh, so that's where planes are gonna come in from so keep that in mind when placing your defenses your air defenses uh, where you are in relation to the entire map not just your deforested area that's the main point I know it's kind of confusing hopefully that made some sense um, when it comes to planes attacking I'll just touch on this real quick you may wonder why sometimes they do all kinds of random s curves and everything uh, you target an item the planes gonna attack that item if that item gets destroyed before the plane gets there the plane is gonna pick the next closest item spatially 
and attack it. And uh, if that item is destroyed before it can attack it, it's going to continue to loop around and find another item, another item, another item. So, um, don't always target an item that maybe is about to get destroyed with your planes. Target uh, items that maybe aren't under fire currently by your army. So that way they take the path that you expect them to take. Hopefully that'll keep your planes alive a little bit longer. And that's it on the defensive and offensive highlight when it comes to planes and where they're coming in from. Let's talk quickly about the uh, forums. Let's see what's on the forums real quick. I posted on the forums a minute ago just to kind of advertise my YouTube channel. I do that every now and then. This is the uh, Nexon official forums and uh, you just Google um, Dominations forums and it's the first thing that pops up. Let's see. Okay. And this is general discussion page. There's a couple others, news and announcements. There's no new news or announcements. So we'll just kind of talk about uh, what's on the forums, what people are asking about. This has been mentioned several times before. Will replays of prime importance need to be implemented in the game, even if they only last until blah, 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 uh, until the war is over, I think is what he says. So that's Cam 1983 basically saying something we've all thought and said many times, which is we need war replays. I know the replay system is broken. Uh, it's often inaccurate. And so... That may be the reason they're hesitant to implement war replays. But in my opinion, I will take broken replays over no replays. So please put it in next on. At least I can see what army composition that people are using when attacking my base. I typically keep my war base as my regular layout because I like to have high trophy count. It keeps the looters away. And it also lets me see how my war base does since I have no other way of seeing replays of it. So that may be a good strategy for you to try. Put your war base as your main base, see how it does. You can at least watch replays there. And especially if you get your metal count up high enough, you'll get attacked by some pretty strong guys and you can see where your weaknesses and strengths are and adjust accordingly. Uh, but I agree, Cam1983, we need some war, please. Uh, war replays, please. Versailles versus Angor. Uh, Angor Watt, this is a discussion that comes up a lot. Actually, people are wanting to have the best uh, wonders they can have, especially for war and for long term. Uh, and these are two that in the same category that could kind of be used interchangeably. Personally, I've used them both. I like Versailles over Angor Wat, and because I can use Versailles for basically an area where uh, I don't have walls. So, I'm trying to get that stupid thing. There it goes. So you can see I don't have walls on the outer edge up there, but I put my Versailles there uh, to kind of uh, slow down people. Just like having walls, it just slows them down. It gives your spawners more time to spawn defensive troops, stuff like that. Uh, Versailles strengths, take a look. I have mine boosted in the library a little bit, so these stats may not reflect the same as what you see in yours, but uh, here's where it is with my library research. Slows down enemy uh, invading troops, provides a help boost, boost to my troops. So people typically don't try to attack my base from the top, uh, even though there's a wide open gap and they come right through. I like Versailles better. Um, Angor Watt does work. I'm unsure of whether it stays working after it's destroyed. Not really sure. Versailles, I believe, does, at least in my experience. And uh, from what I've talked to with others, that's what we see. Of course, you can find out more specific details on uh, Domination's Wiki uh, online. Just Google Domination's Wiki and you can find the specs and everything. I don't really care too much about that. I just play off experience of what I see, how things seem to be working and stuff like that. Because things change over time. They tweak the game and stuff like that. So the information may not be current on the wiki, but uh, that's my opinion on Angor versus uh, Versailles. I prefer Versailles. Angor has to be kind of used more centrally, if, um, which takes up space where I can have other defenses there, stuff like that. So anyways, potato, potato, whatever you think, check out my YouTube channel, that's me. I do that every now and then to get some more viewers, uh, I'm trying to build my channel. New event proved developers don't listen. <laughs> Uh, this guy's complaining, I think, about British Coffee. He's complaining about uh, the demolition spam on oil wells. So people are just coming to his base and attacking his oil wells. Not really sure. He probably doesn't have that many medals, I guess. Uh, but you never know. When you have more medals, you kind of prevent people from just coming and looting. Uh, also, if you're doing a lot of war practice or attacking for purposes of getting national trade goods, you're going to eventually get more medals because you're five-starring bases and stuff like that. So there's some benefits of having the medals. I know people comment on my videos all the time. Uh, why would you worry about medals, blah, blah, blah. I don't really worry too much about it. I just get them because my my defenses are stronger, and it kind of keeps away the looters. 
stuff like that. Um, but I don't specifically target uh, medals. I just try not to lose any attacks, even if they're one medal attacks. But uh, enough about that. Greed, greed, greed. Cold War Age. Kind of cool. I saw a little picture. I hadn't seen this yet. Um, here's the little uh, logo for the Cold War. Uh, choppers coming in over the sunset. Looks kind of neat. That's coming next. Don't know when that'll be. Blah. Probably a little ways down the road. Mm. Okay. And you can always check out the forums online. Just Google Dominations Forums. It'll pop right up for you. And that's it. Let's talk about these re uh, these layouts I've got. So, uh, under the metal leaderboard, the players, number six here, French Atomic Age. Don't know how to pronounce that, but uh, this is the guy that I copied his layout. He had an atomic version of the base layout I'm going to show you. He doesn't have it right now. This looks like more of a, uh, not really sure, but he just, he just changed his layout the other day. So, anyways, I'll give credit to him. He may have copied it from someone else. I can't really say, but... This is my global version of his atomic base that I, sh I uh, screenshot the other day. And here's um, the strengths of this base. So it has basically a box inside a box, but it's got four different sections. One, two, three, four. Um, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And uh, has these four openings right here, 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 and here. I didn't really understand that at first until I started seeing some replays on how it performs. What this does is uh, groups all the troops together, and once they go through that, they break through your uh, city center defensive troop spawning ring. So all they're going to do is they're going to come through this hole as a big group. My howitzers are going to come out and take their whole army out, <laughs> ideally, uh, if they don't sabotage my city center. But they're, all the troops are going to be grouped together. The moment they break the spawning ring of my city center so my howitzers come out blast them all while they're in the group and the splash damage benefit there is that it's going to take out pretty much everybody um has a uh, i've kind of opened up a, a, an edge here so that people can uh, get routed when they come in from the forbidden city side from the south they get routed towards my generals when the moment they come through this entry, they spawn the generals. They also get hit by howitzers coming out of there. And that's all good. Also, have a pretty good Acropolis reach. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, eight or so items getting the Acropolis boost. And this one's been doing pretty well. Um, take a quick look at defensive history. I've been using this for a few days now. And a lot of people are getting creamed at Global Age by Atomic Age. Uh, attackers. This guy here, uh, this top one, this recent attack, he gets the uh, the quick star and the city center, but he fails to get any loot or get even 50% of my base, and he's a level 235 British Atomic, so that should show you something. Uh, he's also got Strike Fighter MK3s, basically maxed out everything, and it took him all that to just get two stars. Another Atomic guy. Same scenario, finally gets through to get the city center, all of his troops get whack, waxed, and he has nothing left to get 50% or any loot. Um, we can keep on scrolling through. If your atomic attacks on your base don't look like this, maybe you should try this base layout. It's been working for me. A little bit farther down, when I first ran the base three days ago, I had three out of four victories right away. Um, here's one, here's another, a one star in the middle. And another victory there and all together that's uh, I mean close to 50 medals there so that's pretty solid three defenses anyway so I'm liking that one um, here's a layout I made the other day it's pretty cool uh, I do like the way it looks a lot which doesn't really matter <laughs> but I have to look at it every day so I think it's kind of important to play on the four box setup where you have four different uh, boxes of, of items, typically four items in each box. What that does is gives you what I feel like is the right amount of quadrants on your base. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the center section, which is nine sections. That's a lot of sections for a global base. I was able to achieve it by not continuing the walls out uh, on these four corners. So where the wonders are, uh, Forbidden City, and I oppose opposite side of my Forbidden City. 
is my oil and my storehouse, so if people want to come in for that loot, they still have to get all the way through the middle, uh, come in through both wonders, and get down to the Forbidden City. That's the idea, at least. This is a very strong layout. I only ran it for a couple days because I just get bored, uh, but it did work really well. I love this layout, so I'll probably run it a little bit more. I may delete it and start some new ones. I don't know. Screenshot this or pause the video, and you can copy it for yourself. Um, it works great. Let's see, and this is an edit of, okay, let's pull this base up real quick. This is the my uh, most popular video base layout. This is one I created um, in a couple videos ago on the Atomic Age release update video. Uh, anyways, it's pretty cool. One thing that I didn't, I uh, wasn't really sure about was these, these walls here. They don't really do much. They kind of route the troops around them, which is okay. But I wanted to get, to get more out of them, so what I did was I moved them over and I encapsulated, I encapsulated the uh, cannons. Which I mean, if you can make one more section of walls or protect your cannons a little bit more, uh, that's great. And so here's what it ended up looking like after the edit. Uh, you can see the change there. It looks a little bit different, but all in all, it still has the same primary feature, which is every one of these openings where the troops can come in is in a double mortar crossover so you can see the splash or the radius of the mortars crossover right on those entry points still and now my tank gun is a little bit more protected than it was before so if you've been using that base that I showed a couple videos ago maybe make this adjustment I haven't really run it yet either I've been running the base that I'm showing now for the past four days uh, let's see. That's it though. Just go back, pause the video on those layouts, and uh, copy them at, at your uh, desire. So uh, that's all I have to say for this video. That is it. I'm going to try to make another one soon. Appreciate everybody for watching. Thank you very much. Share with your alliance. Copy and paste. Share the link. Whatever. Please subscribe. Comment if you don't like something I said or whatever. If you do, great. Thank you. Join San Fran Tokyo. It's S-A-N-F-R-A-N-T-O-K-Y-O. We have uh, hella donations, um, we have hella medals, we have hella high level, don't sandbag, we couldn't if we wanted to, the lowest guy we have is 137, wowzer. Our, our uh, feeder alliance, our good friends of ours where you can travel back and forth, right here San Fran Tokyo too, they're doing very well as well. Um, if you're not as high a level or you need more practice in wars, join those guys. Um, that's all I have to say for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Peace out.